Let me begin our discussion by taking you on a small detour through the ancient art of sieves. Sieves have been around since antiquity. Here are some images from around the world showing you sieves in use today. Where does one use these sieves? Well, to strain materials for impurities, to get at stones mixed in with bushels of corn. Perhaps if one is panning for gold, the impurities are in fact the gold. You pan for gold nuggets and try to sieve away the debt in which it resides. Now, while sieves have been in common use for centuries, in the modern day, sieves continue to be of use in a variety of settings. Sieving flour, sieves in a teapot to catch the tea leaves, sieves in high technology to purify and catch impurities in the production, for example, of semiconductors. So sieves have been around for a great long while. What we shall do is take a new look at sieves from a mathematical perspective. We're going to be talking about a metaphorical sieve. A mathematical filter. We are going to be fishing in a Poisson pond. So to set the stage, let me go back to an ancient and well understood inequality. I'm going to take you back to Tableau 5 and a discussion of monotonicity whence emerged this basic and simple inequality that we called Boole's inequality or the union bound. Captured in language, it says something very, very simple. The probability of the union of a collection of events is no larger than the sum of the associated probabilities. Now, this is a very blunt instrument. The right-hand side is hardly a good estimate of the left-hand side, unless, of course, the events are disjoint, are mutually exclusive. But in general, the bound does not give us very sharp answers. Nonetheless, it has utility, and we've seen examples of where Boole's inequality turns out to be surprisingly efficacious. But let's take a good hard look at it about and say, well, I have an inequality. I have a right-hand side. Where is it likely to be useful? And I'm going to now focus, zoom in on two regions where this bound becomes strangely interesting. The first region is obvious. What if the sum of the right is a small number? Well, that'll force the probability of the union to be a small number. In such regimes, the inequality is not grossly bad, and one can imagine that it might well be useful, and it is. But there's another region, less obvious, where the sum turns out to be remarkably useful. And this is going to be the thrust of our lecture today. What if the sum on the right is large? Now, what does that mean? Well, if the sum is one or larger, then that is patently useless because we know a probability on the left cannot exceed one. Well, what if the sum of the right is not small, but it is not one exactly? Can anything useful be said? It turns out remarkably, yes. Some terminology and some color will add to the picture. So, here's some colorful notation and terminology. Let us think of the events, A1, A2, A3, and so forth, as bad events. Something bad happens. And then, of course, naturally, the complements of these events, the AJ complements, are what we'll call good events. Now, with this kind of idea, to give us a feeling for what we're discussing, then the union of all the AJs means that if this occurs, then some bad event occurs. One or more bad events occur. Something wicked this way comes. Conversely, if the complement of the union, other, in other words, the intersection of the complements of the AJs occur, then 
oh bad events occur. That's an interesting thing to look at. So with this metaphorical view of these events, let's turn to the two regions where Boole's inequality might perhaps be useful. So let's start with the setting that we're familiar with. What if Boole's bound is near zero? Now we can immediately conclude that if the right-hand side is small, then the left-hand side is sandwiched between zero and a small number, and therefore the left-hand side is immediately small, if you want to be very mathematically precise about it. If the sum on the right is no larger than some given tiny positive quantity epsilon, then the probability of the intersections of the complements of these events 1 minus the probability of the union of these events, the probability that nothing bad happens, will exceed 1 minus epsilon. Already, this is a potent observation. Again, if the sum is small, then the probability that no bad event occurs is quite large, is near 1. This can be put immediately to use in a variety of circumstances. So, for example, what are the kinds of things we might want to look at? Well, let's say we take something from medicine. We are watching a patient with cardiovascular problems over a period of time. If over the period of observation, no cardiovascular event occurs, no bad event occurs, then that is manifestly good. And if the chance of that is high, we are doing well. So, something which is as worthy as this is definitely deserving of a slogan. So, here is our slogan. If Boole's bound is near zero, then most outcomes are good. Nothing bad happens. Excellent. What if the bound is not near zero? What can we say now? Well, let's suppose that Boole's bound is potentially quite large, but less than 1. In that case, what can we possibly conclude? Well, if the right-hand side is less than 1, then manifestly so is the left-hand side. And so this says that if the sum on the right is no bigger than 1, then the probability that no bad event occurs is strictly positive. What does that buy us? It tells us that somewhere in the space of outcomes, there is at least one outcome for this idealized chance experiment for which none of the bad events will occur. This is telling us something about the existence of good outcomes, and we'll promptly codify it in a slogan. We will call it Boole's Save. We are fishing in a probabilistic pond. We are hunting for a probabilistic needle in a probabilistic haystack. And we don't know if it's there. But Boole's Save tells us that if the sum of probabilities is strictly less than 1, even if it's quite large, the sum could be, say, 99%. That would mean the probability that no bad event occurs, that all the events are good simultaneously. No cardiac arrest occurs over a period of observation. None of a group of mobile phone calls are dropped by the carrier. If only good events occur, then there is one sample point for which that will happen. This is telling us something about the existence of a good outcome for an experiment. This seems like very stony ground. But look, out of all of this, a principle has emerged. The setting is one where we are doing a chance experiment. We don't know if there are any good outcomes for the experiment. Boole save under these conditions allows us to conclude that there exists at least one good outcome. And of course, 
proving existence is an important first step. We won't look for a hypothetical quantity which may or may not be there unless we have some guarantees it actually exists. We'll promptly put this to use and you'll see how delicate arguments emerge from this apparently innocuous observation.